How do you create calendars with Excel VBA? We start with a simple one. I called it calendar. It's a subroutine in VBA or a macro. The shortcut I assigned is Control Shift C. When you press that key, Control Shift C, it asks you what is your start date. With a, and then it gives you a message box that start at the date you had asked for. It goes to the end of the week, skips weekends next week. In order to make that VBA code, you need to know that there are some date functions in VBA that you may need for this work. First there is date serial. Date serial says tell me which year, which month, which day and I will return the number of that day. That looks weird maybe, it's a serial sequential number. So why that weird number? Day 1 is January 1st 1900, day 2 is January 2nd 1900 and each day it adds one more day, one more day. So since the beginning of the previous century we had more than 41,000 days. Why did Excel do that? Because it can calculate with dates, it can subtract and add. So if you ask me what is the day of February 1st, 2005, 1, the 1st of February. If you type the number we know it for a date, you have to put pound signs. It forces it into a serial sequential number like this. Otherwise it would divide 2 by 1 and divide it by 2005. If you had typed in here 38384, you don't need the pound signs, it would still return 1. The weekday function based on that same format is 3. It happens to be a Tuesday, the machine knows that. 1 is a Sunday, 2 is a Monday. If you want the weekday name of that number 3, it tells you that it's Tuesday. If you ask the month for that date, 2 of course, February 1st, 2005, that is month 2. If you want the month name of that number 2, it will give you February. Now that we know that, we are going to start our first subroutine. I call it calendar. I declare two variables of the date type. An integer type variable for a counter and the string that is going to collect all the information for the calendar starting at day 1 and it goes down through 31 days. We store that in a string. We ask the user with an input box when do you want to start. By default I use today's date which is found through the VBA property date. We are going to loop with counter i from 0 to 30, that is 31 loops. We close the loop with next i and we set d day to the start date the user had chosen in the input box plus i which is 0 the first time. In the first loop d day is the same as d start. In the next loop i will be 1, so it will be 1 day later, 2 days later, 30 days later, etc. If the weekday of this D-Day is not 1, if it's not a Sunday, and the weekday of D-Day is not a Saturday, then we add it to the list, else we don't add it to the list. That is the for loop. What do we do in the if clause? We say to SQL, take what you had already, which is the first time nothing, add a carriage return to it, that means go to the next line in the message box and display D-Day but in a nice format with three digits for the day, so Monday is M-O-N, then we add a tab and then two digits for the month, two digits for the day, two digits for the year. If it's a weekend then we just add only a carriage return, a new line. Don't forget to display in the message box whatever you had collected in SQL through 31 loops. The next one is a little more complicated. It asks again what is the month you want, what is the year you want, 2013, and now it displays something that looks more like a calendar. For this explicit month, August 2013, on the next line 
S from Sunday, M from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It does that for seven, seven entries. Then it goes to the next line. It puts nothing, 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 nothing. And it starts one on Thursday. And we click on OK. It runs the rest of that subroutine. I called it month display. I declare variables again. A counter of the integer type and two other integer type variables for the month and the year. We ask the user with an input box which month do you want to display and I take by default the month of today's date now. We also ask which year do you want to display by default the year of today's date. We start to ask Cal the string with the name of that month, let's say August. We add space to it with ampersands, then the year that the user had chosen and a carriage return, so it goes to the next line later on in the message box. On the next line we add the S, the M, the T, we add that to what we had already in SQL, that is the month name, etc. Then we set the date to what comes out of the date serial function based on this year that the user had chosen, the month the user had chosen, starting at day one. But we have to find out when is that day one, on which day. So we subtract from the date the weekday of the date. Let's say it is five. We subtract five from the date. We subtract one too many, so we correct that with plus one. So we don't start too early the calendar. And there is more coming. We had this already. So we start a do loop. Do loop while the month of the date is still the same as the month the user had chosen. Let's say August. Inside the do loop we do a for loop to get from Sunday to Saturday. Seven steps. Inside that part, we say if the month of the date is the same as the month the user had chosen, August for instance, then add to the calendar, as Cal, the day number of the date. And add a tab to it. And don't forget to update the date by one more day. So we go to the next day. And then once we have reached the end of the row, 1 through 7, when we have reached Saturday, we need a carriage return. And it keeps doing that as long as the date that went updated by one by one is still August. And don't forget to display that SCAL string in the message box. Third and last example is more Excel oriented. It puts the calendar in Excel actually. So it asks first, where do you want to start the calendar in Excel? Let's say by default A1. Which month do you want to display? Which year do you want to display? And it does that, for instance, in A1 for July 2013. Then I did it in A10 for August 2013. I centered and merged that. Then on the next, in the next row we type Sunday through Saturday, next row nothing, nothing, nothing until we reach the first of the month, first day that month, 31st, the end. We need some variables again. The, the new one is as range. We are going to store in a string in which cell do you want to start. And we ask with an input box User, where do you want to start? In cell A1, for instance? Okay, then S range is going to be A1. Ask the month they want, the year they want. And then we are going to talk to the beginning of the range. So we say with range, S range, range A1, and with, and inside that with statement, we are going to do all our actions. We had this already. And within the with range statement, we are going to talk to that range with dot value. Don't forget the dot. 
So it is the value of range A7 or whatever. Put in there the month name, high month, space and the year and what from that range S range take the first cell up to the last cell in that row. So let's say A1 through G1 from Sunday through Saturday and merge those seven cells into one and make the horizontal alignment centered. We have to go to row two. So set R to two. And we do a for loop from Sunday through Saturday. And in that for loop, we talk to range as range dot self in row two. Column I one. 2, 3 through 7. Give me the weekday name of I, which is Sunday first, 1. Take the left part of it, three characters from the left. So S U N M U M O N for Monday, etc. Then we put in D date, the date serial return based on year, month, and the first of the month. We do the same as we did before. We correct for when does that month start, on which day. And there is more coming. This is what we had already. We do a do loop. We loop again while the month of D date is the same as the month the user had asked for. Don't forget to update the row number, row plus one. We loop again through from, Mon from Sunday through Saturday. If D date, the month part is still the same as the month we want, then we put in range as range dot cells row three comma I one. Else empty that cell in case there is something from previous actions. And then update D date by one more day. One more day, one more day. At the moment, D date is in a month that is not the same anymore as August or whatever. We stop the loop. We put a border around the entire current region of that range as range. Put a thick borderline. Let's test it. Let's start with the calendar one. Control Shift C. It asked me what is your start date on the day I did this. It was 8.14. So it starts on Wednesday 8.14 up to the weekend and it goes to the end. Control Shift M is the second one. Which month? Let's say August. Which year? 2013. This was the calendar for August 2013. So the last one does everything in Excel, so it's going to display the calendar somewhere here. Control Shift S. Let's start in cell A1. Let's say starting in July 7 of today's year. And there is the calendar for July. Let's try it for August. Control Shift S. This time I'm going to put it in A10. August this year, and there is the August calendar. You need to know more probably about VBA. I developed for you a CD-ROM called Excel 2007 VBA. It has three modules, three parts in it. And this tells you what every part discusses. Every part has more than 500 slides, so you have to gather more than 1500 slides. It's an enormous rich source for all kinds of VBA problems you might encounter. The ones we discussed today was dates and calendars. But everything else is mentioned in these modules. Where do you find that VB CD-ROM? Publish it under my name Gerard Verschuren. You can find it at MrExcel.com, Amazon.com or GenesisPC.com.